Hey guys, so excuse the voice. I'm still getting over a strep throat. Um, got a little bit different type of video today. Something I've never done. I have, let me get this box open. Set of deer horns. So we're gonna try to put velvet back on. Um, I'm, this is the first time I've ever used the Static King tool. Focus. No, well, it won't focus. Whatever. There it goes. Um, so, we're going to try this and see if we can't put some velvet back on this set of deer horns. Before we do anything, it's got a base that we got to put on there and paint to turn the horns from white to kind of a brown color. Um, so there's actually four steps. First is the base. Actually, there's five. Before I got this, I took some epoxy sculpt and rounded the knobs on all the points and put the little webbing in the cracks of the horns, like whenever the velvet gets real tight and pulls on it. Um... So what we'll do is I'll put the the base, paint the base on, let it dry, and then I have this glue, and I'll do one antler at a time, fiber tack, and then the actual velvet is these little small hairs and I'll try to get a better video because it's not going to pick up like that but I got two packs a deer pack and a caribou pack um, the reason I decided to go with the caribou is this is if you look at some of the pictures online it's kind of a yellowy uh, velvet and our deer have more of a darker kind of like caribou so I'm going to try to mix both of these and try to get the desired color I want um, like I said first time I've ever used this so might mess it up. Hopefully I won't. So let me get all of this stuff opened up and get this base coat opened and get it put on. I'm probably gonna do a time lapse of me painting the base coat. Just because it's probably gonna take 15 minutes and I don't want to eat up a whole bunch of time doing that um i did tape the bottom just so i don't get any of that base coat onto the skull plate and i will bleach this with some hydrogen peroxide whenever i get done also so let's go covered on it and what i didn't mention earlier is this paint acts as some type of as a not some type it acts as a sealer because whenever you strip velvet off of a deer's horn or antlers it becomes it's very porous because it still had the blood running through the horns that hadn't turned hard yet this velvet base from um scenes in nature it kind of acts to seal all those little holes and all those little blood vessel pockets to where whenever you put that fiber tack on there, it's got a good solid, firm, you know, base to adhere to. Um, so I'm gonna let this sit and dry. I'm gonna put a fan on it and let it dry for a couple of hours. 
and then we'll be back to put the fiber tack on it and start putting some velvet on it. All right, so the base coat is dry now. And I'll put it in the static fiber kits. And I'm going to try to have a link in the description for the Static King. You can buy those off Amazon. Sadly, you can't get the velvet kits off of Amazon. You got to order them from Scenes in Nature. Um, I think like the glue, the fiber tack was like $10. The base was $10 and the velvet kits were, I don't know, about maybe about the same per piece. I can't, I really can't remember. But this Static King is the main unit you can get off of Amazon. Um, so let's open that real quick. compartment nine volt so you can run it off of a nine volt battery instructions the negative post screwdriver scraper comb and a little diffuser bottoms We'll keep that a little bit for right now. So apparently I did not buy the power cord. So I gotta go find a 9 volt battery. And I really don't know where I'm gonna find one. Hmm. I'll be right back. Note to self. Before starting a YouTube video, buy batteries. If you need batteries. So. So this, like I said earlier, this, um... The Static King comes with an AC plug, but no more than what I'm going to use it for. It, uh, I won't need anything but just a 9 volt battery. And it's, at least, it's a little bit easier to get into certain tighter spots without the core being in the way too. So basically the way this Static King works it puts a positive charge on a little small hair-like part follicle. And it's got a cord that you connect to the piece that you're trying to put habitat on or put velvet on. And it makes it a negative charge, I think. Whatever. One's positive and one's negative. Anyway, by doing so, it attracts the little hairs... You can see those. And it makes them stand up straight. I don't miss, I don't want this thing. Clip. Well, that didn't work. Pause for technical difficulty. Well, I got the battery compartment closed, but don't know if it's gonna come back up again. Anyway, so it's got a little crown type thing in there. And what it does when you turn it on, it spins. Well, I thought it spun, because it doesn't. Okay, so it does not spin, but whenever you turn it on, it runs electricity through the little grounded rod. Also, to remember when you're doing this, to do it on a very, very clean surface. Um, I got a glass tabletop. And whenever I start doing this, I'm going to move the camera up to, you know, up over here so you can kind of see a little bit better. Um, before I do it, though, I got to put this fiber tack on here. 
And to give you a little bit of an idea of what the stuff looks like, hold on one second. So, the, um, you can get a bunch of different colors of this fiber. And it was because it was not made for velvet. It was made for making scenes like on model trains and just little small dioramas. But um, this is a rock that is made from like a, I can't remember the name of it, but scenes in nature. It's a, it's an aluminum foil with a cotton top. And then you put um, like a Bondo or a, I can't, it's escaped me, whatever. Anyway, make it hard. And then you take the little grass and you sprinkle it on where you want and it looks just like moss. And it's really easy to do because my wife made this. So, you know, can't be that hard. So that was the reason that I that I really wanted one of these. Um, I wanted to try it on antlers first, but it's, it's, it's really good for making habitat style stuff. So I'm going to get the camera moved and get this fiber tack put on here and then we'll mix up the two kinds and see how it works. Um, but going back to what I was saying real quick, you need to have a really clean working surface because a lot of it's going to spill and not stick to what you're working on. So you need to be able to clean it back up and reuse it. Um, even though this stuff is somewhat cheap, you don't need to just... Let it go on the floor because you can reuse whatever doesn't stick again later on. So, so I don't have a, way, a good way to hold the camera above the set of horns right now. So what I'm going to do is just try to get it a little bit closer. Do that right now. I stay in the middle of the frame best I can. So first we're gonna do the fiber tack. I got a brush. It doesn't say how long you have to work it. I think it just says, you know, squirt it on, brush it on, and then so I'm gonna do one set of I'm gonna do the right side or the left side first, and then we're gonna do the left side. Uh scissors. Top off. And basically the way the instructions say is just you squirt it on to whatever you need and then use a brush to even it out. So I'm gonna do it all over the whole set of horns. And I don't know exactly how thick it's supposed to be, but we're gonna Go with that and see how far that'll get us. And I know this looks like glue, but it's, I don't think it's the same as like an Elber's glue. And what will happen is this will dry clear. So any spots that I missed with the, with the static fibers, that brown base will show through. So it won't just be white bone shining. And I can tell that I used way too much. Maybe I can get it spread around. So in these velvet kits, there is two different lengths. Because if you ever looked at white-tailed deer velvet or any kind of cervid, hoofed animals that grow velvet on their further antlers, they have a lot of, they have some short hairs and they have some long hairs. So what we're gonna do is the long hairs will be first and we're not gonna do it as, we're not gonna just cover it with the long hairs because then we'll lose the depth of the short, the room for the short hairs so we'll do a little bit the first layer with the long and then we'll come back and do a second layer with the short and then that'll give us a two like a two-tiered 
deal. And like I said, I'm going to mix that caribou velvet with some of the whitetail velvet and hopefully try to achieve the, the color that I'm wanting going off of this customer's picture. By the way, Mason, I hope you like it. Mason killed this buck this past, I think it was killed on Youth Day in South Carolina. And I'm losing glue. This is just one option you have of keeping velvet on a set of deer horns. The other one is, I think there's three options. Um, one, the first one and the best method by far is freeze drying. But it might be kind of hard to find a freeze dryer in your area with a freezer big enough to put a set of deer horns in. Especially if it's a nice size deer or whatever is in velvet. Um, the second option is soaking the horns or antlers, sorry. Don't want anybody to call me out about calling them the wrong thing. Soaking them in denatured alcohol. And then there's the this method, which is, you know, putting it back on with the Static King. So... All right, got that one. Let me even out that a little bit. Sorry, it was not in the camera. My bad. I said try to do a little best I can. Made a little bit of a mess. Where did the towel go? I got some glue on the table, wipe it up so it, my stuff doesn't stick to the table. Now, so, like I said, there's two different sizes. There's the, I might try this three. So there's, the white-tailed deer kit has some long fibers and then there's little small short fibers. And the caribou has some really long fibers and then some shorter ones. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to sprinkle this, the caribou long on there to start with, just very, very lightly. And then I'm going to mix the brown and the yellow for the white tails, since those look to be about the same. And then I'll finish with the two millimeter. So, okay, look, it tells me. So this is seven millimeter long. These two are four millimeter. And then this one's a two millimeter. So I'm going to start with the four. I'm going to use the big strainer since this is a bigger. Oh, there's a screwdriver. Let me take a screw out. Back the scalpel will work just fine. Um, in the future, I will also do another video for putting a, using this to put some moss on a turkey roost limb. Um, I hope to have that finished and out by February 14th, for that Valentine's Day weekend, because I will have a turkey that I'm taking to the Grand National NWTF show and I'm going to try to do a full length video on it from mounting it all the way up to doing the base and the habitat and all that stuff for it. So that'll be enough. Like I said, this first coating is going to be very, very light. I'm using the big screen, big strainer. So I have my power core, or not my power core, but my Plug this in to there. So I had the end of the cord I have to hook to the skull itself. Oop, 
Turn it upside down. Turn it on. Give it a little shake. It's already starting to shoot out. So now as I'm doing this, I'm just gonna sprinkle it on ever so lightly. And it's not doing right. I don't know why it's not doing. Oh, there we go. Now nah, it's working. I guess I had to get it charged up well enough. It might be kind of hard to see what the velvet on camera right now, but before I finish the video, I will show and do a close up of what it looks like finished. But right now I'm just shaking it and letting it cover all the spots that I want it to on this. Don't touch the horns with the power cord. Antlers, sorry. So what I'm seeing is the closer I hold the Static King to the horns, antlers the better of a job it's doing probably gonna quit with this a little bit and go to a different size velvet That sit right there for a second, and I got a little bit left. Get rid of it. Yeah, you can kind of see a little bit on the camera there. So before I do add my next color, I'm going to sweep, or clean up the what I did not what did, did not pick up off the table. And put it back into the bag to use for later. They do also, I think Scenes of Nature makes a little small vacuum that you can buy that sucks up just a little bit of hairs and you can dump it right back in the body. So now take this. I put the small fine one but the medium one next. So here is the four millimeter deer velvet light color. Put some of those in there. Get a little bit more. And then the four millimeter dark velvet for the caribou. sifting screen on it. Turn it on. I don't know, mix it up a little bit. Trying to get that 
light color and that dark color mixed up a little bit. I went through that kind of quick. I guess I needed a little bit more. Use a little bit more of the dark because that still turned out a lot lighter than what I was hoping. With a little with a rack that's this tight, it's kind of hard to get down in between some of those points. Just starting to look pretty nice. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more. And then go to the the dark brown with that little small. Finish the to finish out the colors. All right, so I'm going to dump this out. I can cut it off. Clean this little bit of stuff up. Take it off. So let's got let's, there's a comparison of with and without. Looks like velvet. So what you see that white that's in between the hairs, this next coat should cover up all of that. He's wasted a bunch. back in the 
this caribou bag. 